Uh, Heavenly Father, we do thank you for your word. Uh, it is such a sweet, sweet blessing uh, that renews us, that sharpens us, uh, that refines us. Uh, Father, we pray that now that you would take this word, your holy word, and that you would use it as you, as you have uh, told uh, us you, you, you should, uh, that it would accomplish its purposes, um, that it would um, convict us, that it would guide us, it would enlighten us, um, that it would uh, expose us, uh, and it would uh, continue to mold us into the image of Christ. So, Father, use this time, I pray, to strengthen your body. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, this is a, a wonderful uh, kind of picture of the Christian life and really the, the difference between the old life and the new life. You know, there's a, there's a stark difference between those are, who are regenerate, those who are born again, those who have come to truly know Christ, and those who don't. So you look at verse 17. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do. Uh, you just spend chapter three talking about, and chapter two and three talking about the, the great mystery of Christ, how God's going to take two people, Jew and Gentile, and make them one in Christ. And then he kind of rejoices in this gospel, this beautiful gospel that displays the manifold wisdom of God, uh, seeing these two people who are uh, so different yet becoming one in Christ. Uh, and then we see that specifically how that's supposed to be called in, in the church. And then after he, he kind of exhorts and says, this is the, the beauty of the gospel, this mystery. Then he says, well, now you who are born again in Christ are now called to live differently. Uh, everyone who comes to Christ has been called to live uh, in a different way. Uh, this, is, this is one of the, the foundations of, of the Christian life is that we uh, as believers must repent. We must turn and change from our old way of life, putting off our old life and putting on uh, the new life. Um, it's interesting if there's a new uh, e-journal that came out uh, through Nine Marks, uh, and in it, it talked about the importance of biblical preaching. And uh, in one of the articles, he says, I, I listened to, um, I'm not sure how many hours, 18 hours of sermons from the fastest, the biggest churches uh, in America. And uh, what he found was very uh, sad. Uh, one thing that he did not find is a lot of repentance, uh, a lot of change, a lot of exhortation to leave your former way of life and uh, put on Christ. But that's what we're called to do. We must no longer walk the way the Gentiles do. And then he kind of teaches what um, the way the Gentiles or the way uh, the unbeliever, the unregenerate person lives. And you see that right there at the second half of the verse, it says, in the futility of their minds. Um, you know, often what we see in our world is we see a lot of people who think that they are incredibly um, intelligent, that they know uh, things, and yet they are um, lost. Even though they think they know the truth, they, they don't. And we want to make sure that um, you know, just because people have degrees or have positions, that does not make them wise. Um, uh, those who don't know Christ really are empty. Uh, they may make good observations, uh, but they're incomplete uh, because they don't know the Lord. This is in verse 18. It says they are darkened in their understanding. And we look at this idea of just recently on Sunday morning, Jesus is the light of the world. He illumines. He allows us to see things. Well, here they're actually darkened. Uh, they, they don't see things rightly. Um, not only are they darkened, they are alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of heart. This idea of alienated or separated is kind of a key theme uh, throughout the book of Ephesians. It kind of has this, this duality. Either you are with Christ or you are alienated from him. Uh, we see this theme throughout the Bible that you will either belong to God or you belong to this world. Um, and one of the things I can, can you know, re regularly say is that uh, when we assemble uh, as a body on Sundays, uh, we are, 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 making a statement of faith saying we fundamentally do not belong to this world, but we belong to the Lordship uh, of Jesus Christ. We, we want to assemble under his Lordship as he, him as the chief shepherd. Well, we can't do that now, right? Uh, in terms of a formal way on, on Sunday morning, but we can still re represent um, Christ and how we live um, and uh, our desire to serve him. Here, it says those who are unregenerate are alienated from the life of God, the full life of God, I would say alienated from the body of Christ, um, and they're, they're ignorant. They don't know. Not because they, they, don't, um, they can't know, but they can't know because their eyes have not been uh, awakened in one sense, but they can't know because of their hardness of heart. 
uh, they they been, they hear the truth, they hear the facts of the gospel, and yet they push it aside. They are hardened to it. Um, and this is in verse 19, kind of continue on. They, they become callous, having given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. Uh, if you look at the ways of the world, this is really what the, the, the Ephesian Christians were dealing with. Um, I read in one commentary, they were a, um, an island of despised people in a cesspool of wickedness. Uh, and beloved, I think that's often the way American Christians are. Uh, we are an island of despised people, godly folks, uh, in a cesspool of wickedness. Uh, now, what's going to happen in, in recent uh, days what's because of this uh, virus is that people are going to highlight uh, the good things in humanity. They're going to highlight our, our frontline uh, healthcare workers. Praise God for their service. Uh, there's so many people in our nation right now who are sacrificing, uh, and they are, they are kind of showing the and reflecting the best part of the Creator. Uh, and I think that what the, the Lord is doing through this virus is He's making a lot of people fragile. Uh, and people are thinking about death. And we know this always happens around Easter. Uh, people start to be awakened a little bit to, to life after, and people talk more of the resurrection. They may be softened to hear the truth. Uh, friends, there is not a time in, in the history of, of, of my, my generation or maybe the history of, of the American church where people are more thinking about life and death every single day than now. Uh, this is an opportunity for us as Christians. This is an opportunity for us uh, to help people realize that the, the living life for yourself, a greedy practice, all kinds of impurity, that is empty. That leads to death and disaster. And we know that, don't we? We, we, we know how our lives were like when we didn't follow Christ, when we lived according to the, to the prince of the power of the air in this world. Uh, but God has changed us, right? And this is the transition. Isn't this beautiful? This is the old self, and now you have this new self, this, this thing that Christ has wrought in our hearts. Verse 20, but that is not the way you learned Christ. Uh, we, we learned Christ, meaning that we put on Christ. We, we understand who he is, that he, he came to seek us out. We who were lost and who were unrighteous, he came to find us, uh, and then he came to die in our place dead and buried and overcame uh, the grave so that we can uh, experience a, a connection with the Father. Jesus Christ says in 1 Peter 3.18 that the righteous one came for the unrighteous to bring us to God. That's the way we learn Christ. Not, we don't come to Christ because we're righteous. We don't come to Christ because we think that we have it all together. It's the exact opposite. We don't have it all together, do we? Right? Life is, 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 is hard, and this is what Christ has done for us. He says, listen, you are unworthy, and you are a, a sinner, and yet I love you. I know everything about you, and I'm setting my love upon you. Experience forgiveness. Experience the, the love, the profound love of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, when we think of Christ and all that he's done for us, how can we continue to live in sin? Right? That's, the, that's the whisper of the evil one. Right? He tries to mute or um, you know, hinder or obscure the beauty of Christ so that we would go back to our former way of life. That is not the way we want to live. Right? And I pray even during these days that we, you would not be tempted to go back to, to old ways of entertainment uh, you're not going to go back to old way of living because you can't really go back and do the things you used to do. Um, but I don't want you to go back and, and, and think about the things you used to think about and maybe uh, kind of have your mind be absorbed with the things in this uh, world. Well, he goes on and says, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Uh, I just want to ask you as, as a church body to pray. I want to beg you to pray uh, over these uh, coming days. Uh, so typically on a Sunday morning, um, we get maybe about 100 people viewing our Facebook live feed, right? Uh, this past week, we had over 1,000, right? Uh, and that a lot of it has to do with you sharing um, the Facebook Live on your uh, on your Facebook page, telling your friends and family about it, um, 
uh, Rich Fluke had his, uh, um, his family in, in Pennsylvania watching the live stream and even sent the, uh, the sermon outline and the, the song list and the, the coloring page that they actually watched the entire service and filled out the coloring page. Listen, we could take advantage of this time by just inviting people to watch this video, right? If you have a, a neighborhood, um, a Facebook group, maybe invite them. Or if you have someone who's maybe out of church, invite them and then send them the link. You know, not to work. No, this is not the time where we're trying to say, look at what we're doing. Look at our church. We're, we're, we're not about like Park Baptist Church during the season, right? Uh, we always are together. You know what I'm saying? Like we as a body want to care for one another. What I'm trying to say is that we're not trying to uh, boost our membership role. Uh, we're trying to, to increase the book of life, right? We want people to move from death to life. So we want to, I'm asking you to pray. The, the messages in God's sovereignty are very going to be very evangelistic. Um, we just talked about Jesus being the door, the one way into heaven. Uh, and now we're talking about, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep. We're going to talk about shepherding and how, how Jesus Christ laid down his life. He, he came to seek that which is his own. I'm going to appeal to people uh, in, in, in the message. So I just ask you to pray that God would use this time to bring people to himself and any avenue you have to invite people. I pray that you would, you would do so because people need to be taught the truth. It's not enough just to, to live a good life. And we know that there's going to be people who are going to be doing good things in, 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 the, in the coming days. And we praise God for that. That is a gift of common grace, us being made in the image of God. We like, and there's times where we want to serve in times of crisis, the people kind of come together. Why? It's because it's part of the nature of, of how God made us. We, we fight for survival uh, and we serve each other in, in times of trial. Uh, but just, just kind of as we kind of, kind of finish this paragraph, it says, assuming that you've heard about Christ, we're taught in him as the truth is in Jesus to put off your old self, which belongs to the former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on a new self, create after the likeness of God and true hope, righteousness and holiness. Friends, I pray over these next uh, few weeks, uh, we have some goals, uh, maybe some learning that we want to do in our own mind. Um, you know, uh, you know, let me just say this. A lot of us are not, um, uh, we don't have a lot of free time, <laughs> you know, a lot of us are still working full hours, 40 hours a week, and we're around more people. So sometimes it feels like we actually have less time to think and to, to study and to read. Uh, but that's not the case for a lot of us. Some of us have plenty of time to, to read and think, uh, you know, and my wife and I were talking this past week and, and, and we're going to be in this quarantine for foreseeable future, right? At least another month possibly six to eight weeks more. We have no idea how long we're going to be here, right? Uh, so at the end of this, you know, quarantine, it would be great if we had something, this is what I learned during that time, not only to, to rest in Christ, the beauty of the gospel, to gaze upon the Lord, what he's done for us. But here's the things I learned. You know, I, I took a, I did, listened to about a book on, or, or a sermon series on ecclesiology or on eschatology. Uh, I now know what kind of, uh, if I'm pre-trib, post-trib, or uh, pre amil, amil, I mean, we, I know who I am now, right, after, after this season, right? Who knows what the Lord wants to do? Uh, it could be he wants you to, to write poetry or write a hymn, right? It could be that, hey, I'm going to try to find time to, to encourage um, one, of my, one of my fellow believers, right, or reach out to my uh, old friends who may not know the Lord. Um, we want to renew our minds, right, in the Word, and then we want to help others, uh, others do the same. So I pray that uh, during these, these days, right, that we would take advantage of even now, like any day in, in, in this life, we want to put off the old and put on the new. So the questions we want to ask ourselves is how do I put on uh, the new self? How can my mind be renewed during this season? So let's, let's pray to that end. Father, we do thank you for your grace. Uh, and I pray, Lord, that you would help us be renewed in our minds. Help us take advantage of this season uh, so that we can become more and more like Christ. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, 